The BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Tyler Haas. What is good on a Friday? BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Friday, November 12, 2021. What is up? Thanks for being here. No, this is not Countdown to Tip Off. This is BYU Sports Nation. I am Jerem Jordan. He is Tyler Haas, and he agrees with me that BYU, get a good shot of it here, is a volleyball school, Tyler. I've been no, saying it for no, a while. I never said that, Jer. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I do love volleyball. I respect what they're doing, but it, it's not a volleyball school. I don't remember anyone else being ranked fifth in both sports. So, <laughs> it's true. It's yeah, true. top five. No, I I'm know. just playing. Uh, it's awesome. We are going to have a fun show today, by the way, including volleyball. But it's a ball night for men's basketball taking on San Diego State. Remember them? Played a couple of games course. against them. Of course, three? I do. Three games? Four games? Uh, three games. Three games. Yep. Okay. How'd you fare? Uh, we were uh, one and two. One and two. Okay. Well, we won at San Diego State. Well, so, that's the thing I mean, BYU does with yeah. Kawhi Leonard. So yep. Yep. that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's right. What's he up to? Uh, we'll preview the matchup, the importance of that game tonight, and the context of the season. Uh, how big a deal was the Colin Chandler signing? We're going to talk to Paul Biancardi, the ESPN National Recruiting Analyst. He'll give us some great information on that, I'm sure. And Heather Olmstead, women's volleyball coach, joins us in the studio, discusses her six seniors ahead of the final match of the regular season at home tomorrow on BYU TV. But first, today's headlines. BYU Hoops hosts former Mountain West rival San Diego State tonight at the Marriott Center. Both teams come in tonight's game 1-0. and oh. Catch the game on BYU Radio tonight with pregame coverage beginning at 8 Eastern. Countdown to tip-off with myself and Jaron begins at 8.30 Eastern right here on BYU TV. Now, San Diego State defeated the team, UC Riverside. Last night, if you are on the Twitter, you saw that UC Riverside made like a 65-footer awesome. at the buzzer to beat awesome. Arizona go, State. Go watch that. Kevin Nixon, eat your heart out. It was awesome. Number five women's volleyball swept Pepperdine last night by 35. Just an incredible performance by the Cougars. Amazing. The uh, Pepperdine hit .008. I mean, that means less than 1% of the time they were put. Uh, it was crazy. Cougars are on a 17-match win streak, 24-1 this season, 14-0 in West Coast Conference play. The final home game of the regular season. I say regular season because they're going to host the first and second rounds, we think. Uh, 3 Eastern tomorrow on BYU TV. Again, Heather Olmstead will join us later in the program. BYU men's and women's cross-country teams host the NCAA Mountain Regionals today at the Timpanogas Golf Club. The have fourth... you played there? I have not. Mm, okay, actually. let's go. Yeah, let's go check it out. Come on. How's your golf game, Jared? Terrible. It's the worst. <laughs> Fourth-ranked women begin at 1 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Oak local. The eighth-ranked men begin at 2 Eastern, noon local. Nationals coming up uh, soon, which is super exciting. So get get the regionals done. Exciting to host those uh, at the golf course. Don't step on the uh, in the hole, you know. Lots of awards to hand out for BYU women's soccer. Michaela Coulihan, she might be the best player in the country. She's amazing. West Coast Conference Offensive Player of the Year for the third time, becoming just the third player ever to do that in West Coast Conference history. She's also the midfielder of the year. That's a new award. She's also on the West Coast Conference first team with Cameron Tucker and Jamie Shepard. Bella Felino, Brecken Mozingo on the second team. Olivia Smith makes the freshman team. Cougars host New Mexico. What is it, a Mountain West Conference weekend? What's, what's up with this? Tomorrow, 7 Eastern, in the NCAA tournament on BYU TV, baby. Women's Hoops hosts Fresno State tomorrow in their second game of the season. The Cougars are coming off an 81-52 win over Lipscomb. Watch the game tomorrow at 2 Eastern on the BU TV app. I believe that game's at 6 Eastern, just to be clear. Cougars in the NFL this weekend. Brady Christensen, Cam Newton, and the Panthers take on the Cardinals. Kyle Van and the Pats take on the Browns. Sione Takitaki, Jersey Swap, and Taysom Hill and the Saints play the Titans. Okay, all rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Big-time matchup tonight in the Marriott Center. Jeff Goodman tweeted this morning his top five games of the day and BYU San Diego State coming in at number two. How about that? Live on BYU TV and, of course, BYU Radio. This rivalry runs deep, Tyler. This goes back a long time, these two teams. Some good ball has been played. Let's think about what this game means in context of the whole season. Does BYU need to beat San Diego State tonight if it wants to be a single-digit seed in the NCAA tournament? I believe so. I mean, you, every game is so important, but this is a big opportunity against a really good team that, I mean, we don't know how good San Diego State is, but 
That they're, they're last year, good. last year that was BYU's biggest win, yep. right? And yep. so, and they're playing some good teams, and so um, the, these are the wins that you want to get early, and then you cheer for these teams as the season goes on. Let's talk about uh, kind of how it works with the NCAA tournament committee. So, there's a net ranking that's the sorting tool. Um, uh, that's a Google analytic formula, uh, you know, algorithm to figure all that out. They also figure out how you, uh, you know, what you want to watch on Netflix too. They're telling me Seinfeld right now. I should watch more Seinfeld. Um, and then they break it down into different quadrants. So for a home game, a team has to be in the top 30 of net to be a quad one. We're almost there. Right. And, and, and when it really, it's about when the dust settles, what mm-hmm. is that number going into selection Sunday? Okay. Right. Um, but we will evaluate at that as we go. Last year, San Diego state was 26 and that was a road game. That was top 75. In that case, that was a quad one. Mm-hmm. That was BYU's best win against uh, anyone ranked that high. Right. BYU went three and five in the quad in quad ones. We've learned from Tom Homo, who was on the selection committee for three years that in this quad system, you need to play enough quad games and win, probably in BYU's case, about a third of them. BYU mm-hmm. went three and five, so a little better than a third last year. That was enough to not just get an NCAA tournament bid, but a single digit seed as a six seed, which is pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm not uh, convinced that BYU has to win this particular game because BYU can make it up later. It's so early. But when you think about what are the most losable games on the schedule? Mm-hmm. I'd probably pencil in Oregon next Tuesday as the most lo- – well, Gonzaga right. twice. But right. Oregon there, if you win one of those, you can atone for the sins of a bad loss, right? So I'm not sure BYU has to do it. But take care of business at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's in the Marriott Center. In 2019, BYU did not. Now, remember, that was a team without Yoli Childs. Mm-hmm. Let's not forget that in his bogus nine-game suspension from the NCAA. Yeah, ridiculous. That was stupid, right? I think BYU does need to take care of business at home, though, tonight. And BYU's a, a motivated, excited team. Not having Richard Harward is a big deal, though, because San Diego State always comes in with length and athleticism. That's right. going to be a tougher draw for the other guys. But Caleb Lohner and Gideon George and Foose and these guys, I, I think they're ready. And they won in Viejas last year. Right. Now, this is a team that BYU is very familiar with, um, even even though they don't play him twice a year. I mean, we played him the last couple of years, and yeah, it it, it hurts having uh, Richard Harward out. Guys are going to have to step up, but this is a deep team, and guys are ready to step up. BYU has the talent uh, in, in Foose and Atiki and uh, you know, Seneca Knight can play the four a little bit. I mean, the length and athleticism, I, I believe, is there this year to, to match up against the San Diego State. And so uh, really excited for this one. And then we saw some of the highlights a moment ago, but there were some really clutch threes in this game. Alex Parcello picks up a ball that rolls out to him, makes a three at the shot clock. Brandon Abrant makes the game winner, the game sealer, perhaps, yeah. late in that, that game. It was tough. It was huge, right? So T. John Lucas has got to have a – a much better game than he had on Tuesday. Atiki Ali Atiki, you brought him up. He didn't play a second on Tuesday. I believe he will play tonight mm-hmm. because BYU does need his athleticism. And then Foos is going to get some minutes, of course, played the majority of the minutes uh, right. at the five, which right. is if you had said a couple months ago, hey, <laughs> Foos, uh, Fuseni Tra- Tra- uh, Traore is going to play 24 minutes in the season opener and have a five, eight, and three blocks. I'd go, wow. Yeah, I know. That's better than I thought, man. Yeah. It's incredible. I, I'm, I mean, he's a guy that we, we've talked about this. He, you feel comfortable with him on the court. I mean, he which takes, is really interesting. As a freshman, he he has a high basketball IQ. Yeah, and Wasatch and, Academy. Yeah, knows how to play. Doesn't turn the ball over, uh, and and just mixes it up inside against a lot bigger guys. I mean, we saw him go up against six eight three oh five at Cleveland State, and and he just moved him out of the way. They gave called him a an shoulder. offensive foul on the shoulder. <laughs> I know which I was we like, loved it though. He's too strong. Yeah, yeah. I, I, okay, so Vegas says this is a, a, a three-point BYU win. Ken Palm says this is a two-point BYU win. So this is expected to be a tight game. When you look at the other good games on the schedule as well, let's highlight some of those. Potential quad ones in my mind, looking ahead. Oregon, Missouri State, again, because that's top 75, possibly true road game, that's quad one possibility. Gonzaga, of course, twice. San Francisco on the road. St. Mary's on the road. Hopefully St. Mary's is good this year, and if they're top 30, that would be I mean the home game is there. This is probably a quad two game if San Diego State's between 31 and 75. That's mm-hmm. probably where it lands. 
Hopefully San Diego State's top 30, and this is a quad one game. And again, you don't even have to win all the quad. Like, basketball is different than football. Mm -hmm. Football, it's like you got to have zero or one losses to be in the mix for something. Mm -hmm. If you have two losses, you're in the conversation, but you're not. I mean, that's the debate right now is, is BYU a New Year's Six candidate? I, I don't believe they are with two losses. In basketball, again, you just need to win like a third of these quad ones. You need to play enough and then win probably a third. So tonight's a big game, but like the bigger games, Oregon, honestly, on the resume, like a Missouri State might be a bigger game than San Diego State. That's like weird to say out loud. Weird. You're like, Missouri State? I can't even name the, the mascot. I don't, I don't know who they are. <laughs> but, but let's go. Last year, BYU did uh, well enough to earn a six. Can they take care of business at home? Two years ago, San Diego State won this game. The road game has won the last uh, road team has won the last two years. What by the way, what's it like to play San Diego State? You played them three times. They've always been really good. They get up for the game. BYU gets up for the game. Yeah, I mean the games that I played in, really, really physical. Um, you know, high high pace games and uh, lots of shots from everywhere. Wow, we got some highlights. Old oh, we highlights. got Tyler Hawes highlights from the Maui Love invite. It. Catch and shoot. Yep. Uh, Did we show any I, misses or it's just all makes? All makes. Come on, Jeremy. <laughs> Finishing over length right there. Yeah. Come on. Those are contested shots, bro. They are. You had the shots. Yeah. No, they're they're a good they're all they always have athletes. Good athletic team. Um, but I mean, if you if you play on attack and and find a way to to put the pressure on them, right? Because they 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 want to come out and pressure you. Oh. Uh, go right at them, man. Look at you in the post right there. Curled to the baseline, help came, he still got it up and over. Uh, that was a fun game to play in. Holy cow. Maui yeah. Invitational. It was awesome. What, what's the Maui Invite like, by the way? Because those are always huge games. And it's like on ESPN, it's like the A-level crew. Yeah. Jay Bill is hanging out there. Yeah. You, you can feel it's such a small gym. and At the Chaminade, right? Chaminade, yep, right there in Maui. And, and it is so hot. <laughs> like you, That's what everyone you, says. You walk in like and you're already sweating, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's so fun. Yeah, Jay Billis. I mean, you can feel the energy and, and hype surrounding that tournament right, right when you get there. That's awesome, man. Well, uh, Tim Lacombe gave me one of his Maui invite shirts, I think from that tournament. It probably. I need to wear it sometime. Okay, our question of the day. Does BYU need to beat San Diego State if they want to be a single-digit NCAA tournament seed? It's an interesting question here in Game 2 of the 31-game regular season. Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Toby McCarty on Twitter. You can weigh in on Facebook and Instagram as well. A bit early for that, but I would rather we beat them now so we don't have to worry about that conversation later. But arguably... More importantly, I'd prefer a win in order to avoid having to see any bragging from their dumb student section Twitter account. <laughs> their, their student section is brutal. Any memories come back? Yes, That's lots right. of memories. I, I'm, I remember my freshman year at San Diego State. We're walking off the floor, and and Tom Homo's with us, and and they start yelling at him and saying something, and he goes up into the stands, <laughs> like. I, I'm glad there wasn't social media and other things at the, at that point. But he goes up into the stands, wasn't throwing any punches, didn't didn't do anything <laughs> like that. Comes but up to he that. was mixing it up. I mean, they, this is a brutal, loyal fan base and and, and a rivalry. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. Of course he did. Uh, okay, another response. Uh, Russ Grizz's father, what's up on Twitter? Second game of the season. Not sure I'd put that much pressure on one game this early on lots of games to be played that will play into their seating so i'm going to say they don't need to win tonight to get a single digit seed how much do we care about single digit seed because <laughs> like getting into the tournament's one thing being a single digit seed is another obviously yeah. if you're uh an eight or higher you are going to be favored in the game and it's a better matchup um unless you're playing ucla and that was actually a worse matchup I as know. an 11 i know so yeah, I see both sides of the argument here. No, it's it, but you're fighting for the highest seed possible yeah. for that matchup reason, right? Uh, you the higher you the higher your Jose. seed, yeah, the higher your seed, the better chances you have of advancing, yeah. and so that's what you're playing for. But Jerem, I love that we're we're talking. It's not the conversation is not about are we going to make the tournament. Yeah, we're, we're talking about are we going to get a single digit seed? There's and an expectation, right? There is, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. No, yeah. it's awesome. Continue to weigh in on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Coming up, where does the new BYU 12 rank in the Power 5 conferences? Ooh, in football, I like that. And ESPN's Paul Biancardi on how the Cougars got Colin Chandler. And is he a future NBA player because he's number 28 in ESPN's Top 100? We'll ask him. 
This is BYU Sports Nation with Tyler Haas. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford, think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Getting ready for the ultimate puppy championship. And maybe I could enter Marley. You need two other dogs to make a team. We're gonna be a team? Always know your enemy. What enemy? I was thinking if I could train Marley for this competition, then mom would let me get my own dog. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is a ball night. The old Mountain West rivalry of BYU and San Diego State coming up tonight in men's hoops. BYU, BYU TV, we've got the game. Countdown to tip off gets you ready at 8.30 Eastern. We're going suits tonight, by the way. We, we are. Polos on Tuesday. We're going suits tonight. Upgrade. Let's Go. I don't like that, Jerem. I guess so. Jerem Jordan, Tyler Haas with you. Great to have you here on a ball day. And to talk about BYU men's hoops and Colin Chandler and even the Cleveland State win, let's bring in Paul Biancardi, National Recruiting Director for ESPN, former Horizon League coach of the year at Wright State. He's a college basketball analyst, NBA draft analyst. Paul, great to have you on the program. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you guys for inviting me. Let's start with Colin Chandler because you were uh, the guy on the Instagram live with him and you have this relationship with him and, and you cover the game. This was a huge get for BYU. What was it like to kind of see the evolution of Colin Chandler as a player and then he ends up choosing BYU? Yeah, I had a chance to see Colin Chandler numerous times and put him in our ESPN rankings, which is a pretty prestigious place to be uh, pre-summer. I believe he was 77. And then after this summer, he was just fantastic. He took his game to another level. He was already really good in terms of scoring the ball for the Utah prospects. Uh, he could make tough shots. He could score big numbers. Uh, he's a team guy. That, that's what really attracted me to him is with all his talent and all his statistics, he's still a team guy. He makes the right play at the right time. Uh, I bumped him up into the uh, high 20s in the class, and that's a very, very elite spot. He comes in to BYU after his Mormon mission. I mean, he's going to be a difference maker from day one. He'd be a difference maker if he went to college next year. That's how good he is. Yeah, and part of me wishes he would, but obviously uh, Tyler and I <laughs> went on missions. We know the value of what a mission can do for you in your life. Um, 50 spots is a massive jump, Paul. What did you see that made you feel like he earned a 50-spot jump? Consistency. Brought it every game. Uh, and he does he does it in different ways. I mean, it's the three-point shot. It's the drive. He can make the assist. A much underrated passer because, as Tyler knows, a lot of guys get reputations on how they score the ball. He can really pass it. Now, his defense must improve. He recognizes that. But offensively, he has a gift to put the ball in the basket, whether it's in transition 
or in the half court set. You run plays for him, or he could take a broken play and make something happen. Uh, he's one of the best guards in the country. Absolutely. Uh, BYU's so excited to have him. Um, you know, I think it's unique that he exploded onto the scene. I mean, generally, I mean, this is my feeling that most top 100 recruits, you know, I, I mean, they're 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 a top 100 recruit for a while, right? I mean, is he pretty unique in that he exploded so late and had so many big schools chasing him? Well, I think he, he as he mentioned on the um, Instagram Live, he started to get recruited late in his sophomore year from the high level. And, and then it started to happen even more so, more intense, as you know, when he was a junior. I think once you get on that national stage in the summertime, you have, a, you have a chance, you have an opportunity, you know, to play against the best players in the country, and then you can see how you do, how your team does. And him playing with the Utah prospects was really important, guys, because he played with other really good players, and, and they played a team game. So many times I see, you know, ragtime, pick up basketball in the summer, and, and it's hard to see a player's traits. And, and you asked me why he made the big jump. Part, part of Colin Chandler's DNA, I believe, is that he, he loves the game. You know, he plays with a certain joy to it. And once he got up into that ranking area, he kept that spot. But you're right. Usually guys sometimes start out early and stay ranked throughout their career. Some guys get ranked early and then fall off because they can't manage the expectations. And Colin Chandler getting, getting good at the right time. Paul Biancardi, National Recruiting Director for ESPN, joins us on BYU Sports Nation. There were some big names that Colin could pick from. Grew up a Utah fan. Dad's still a Utah guy. Wore a black shirt instead of a BYU shirt. The rest of the family wore the BYU gear, which was fun. <laughs> He'll come around in time. But uh, th this was BYU beating out the likes of Gonzaga and Arizona and Oregon and, and Stanford and Utah. This was a big get for the Cougars. Did you have a sense of how BYU won this in the last couple of weeks? Well, first of all, I really didn't know where he was going up until the last couple of days. I, I had no idea. I, I really believe, though, it was between Utah and BYU. I think that tennis match went back and forth a lot. And that speaks volumes to both of the programs because you have Oregon, Arizona, Gonzaga. Basically, all those schools in the Pac-12 and Gonzaga really wanted him. And I'm sure there were schools in other conferences as well. He just kind of narrowed that down uh, to West Coast schools. So... I mean, for, for him to, to be where he was and for the BYU to get him, ultimately, he told me the staff, Mark Pope, Burgess, and the rest of the guys just showed him a level of experience at the NBA level that could help him get there. That's his ultimate goal someday, as most great players all want to play in the league. I think Colin Chandler felt most comfortable with the BYU staff helping him develop over time. Paul, what what are uh, Colin's chances of of, of making uh, the NBA at this point? I mean, uh, evaluate his talent from from that perspective. Well, he's a long way away. I mean, he really is. Just because you're ranked doesn't mean you're going to be an NBA player. It just means that you're a really good player now in high school, and you have a chance to impact the college game. And then there's an opportunity uh, to get drafted. So for Colin Chandler, lots of development. He has to change his body. Uh, who better than Eric Shork, strength and conditioning coach. Shout out to my man, Eric, who worked for me at Wright State and St. Louis. He's got to change his body. He's got to change his defensive mindset, the approach to the defensive end. And then offensively, he's got to become more efficient and uh, polish up his skills. He, he's got to keep that high level of competitiveness. I think he has a real chance, guys, uh, to be an NBA draft pick. Where that will be, uh, it's so hard to predict right now. It's so hard to project. But I do see Colin Chandler as an NBA draft pick. Uh, when he gets back on the court, I can tell you a little bit more how closer he'll be. Yeah, he's three years away from playing, and then he needs at least a year or two, you'd think. So we're like five years out from this conversation. But I didn't realize Eric Shork worked for you. That's super cool. We love Eric. He's doing great work here at BYU. We're, we're super lucky to have him. Um, in terms of hey, recruiting. Hey, let, let, him, let him work you out. He'll make you stronger and faster. <laughs> hey, I, I don't think you'll like him as much after this, the workout. Yeah, I'm on this <laughs> side for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Um, he's got a great personality, too. He's, he's fun. In terms of recruiting battles, obviously, Colin being a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Saints is a big deal in terms of being, BYU having access to a kid like that, right? But BYU's Big 12 invite, what does this mean for BYU in recruiting, especially basketball? Because as we know, Paul, this is the best league in America, and it will still be 
when uh, the four teams enter and Texas and Oklahoma leave, it would seem. Hey, it's a big-time conference. It's going to stay a big-time conference, even with the exit of, of Texas and Oklahoma, as you mentioned. And that was a big attraction of Colin Chandler. See, all the guys that are really talented and ranked, uh, they want an opportunity against the best. And for BYU to go into the Big 12, uh, Colin saw an opportunity to play against the likes of Baylor and Kansas State and TCU and Texas Tech and, and then still stay at home. And I think that was a big, big uh, selling point and the fact that he's going to go on a mission and then when he comes back, they're already in the conference. Uh, that was huge. The staff was big. Obviously, the B BYU alumni, as you guys know more than anyone, uh, how strong of a foothold they have in the state. And that was attractive because Colin understands that, you know, when his playing days are over, uh, he's going to rely on the BYU alums as well as his education and his personality uh, for, for employment opportunities. And BYU certainly has an influence in that area, as you mentioned. Okay, let's, let's ask you about Cleveland State the Horizon League champs. You were the coach of the year at Wright State, super successful there. I think some people got a sense of what that meant, uh, that win on Tuesday in the season opener, but I don't know if people fully understand it because Cleveland State had five seniors. They all come back. They came back. They won the league. That was a pretty good win, maybe an underrated win for BYU on the opening night. Yeah, great win. First of all, college basketball this year is, is probably going to be the oldest it's ever been because of the COVID factor, everybody coming back. So teams are going to be really experienced. You're going to be playing against 23, 24-year-olds. As you guys know, being with BYU and, and, and the kids go on a mission and come back, how much tougher, stronger-minded those kids are. When I, was at Cle when I was at Wright State, we played Cleveland State. They weren't very good at the time. Dennis Gates has really resurrected the program. And he's got kids that are really like, I call them alley cats. They just come at you. Uh, they're tenacious. They play hard. They've been successful. Uh, he grew under Leonard Hamilton of Florida State, so he has a he has a style and a philosophy. Anytime you win a game in the mid-majors against a team that has won their league or is predicted to win their league in the future, it's a great win. It was a great toughness win for BYU because Cleveland State has this mantra, and they really play hard all the time. They're really super aggressive. Uh, so kudos to BYU. Great win. Paul, um, what are your thoughts on Coach Pope and, and the program that he's building? I mean, uh, two NCAA tournament appearances and two top 25 finishes. I mean, he's building something special here at BYU. He really is. Um, Mark's a, a really energetic guy, and uh, he knows what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. The recruiting has been sensational. You know, some guys like Alex Barcelo, um, you know, you, you get him back on a transfer situation. You get the right transfers. You get the in-state players. You, you know, you hire a staff around you that are not yes men. You can't have yes men around you if you're going to be good in college athletics or, or good at any level in coaching. You guys know that. So I think Mark challenges himself with his staff um, and, and just the direction he's taken this program. It, it's been really, really fun to see. Um, I don't want to say this to um, – make BYU fans, you know, a little anxious. But, you know, if he gets real successful, you don't know where he's going to go from here. No, that's what we've been thinking. And the Big 12 thing uh, maybe helps with that, which was, oh, maybe he's more – maybe BYU can't afford to pay him more and he's enticed to stay should BYU get to a Sweet 16. You kind of need to win two games plus – to get real attractive, like Mark Pope's on the rise. At what point is he not on the rise and he's risen? Um, but but we'll see. I do want to finish with this. BYU and San Diego State tonight. That was BYU's best win by net ranking uh, last season on the resume to get BYU a sixth seed. Tonight, San Diego State comes in having defeated the UC Riverside team that made the buzzer beater last night no. against Arizona State, which was crazy. What are your <laughs> thoughts on the matchup tonight in the Merritt Center? Place is going to be rocking, first of all. Great to have fans back. And the Marriott Center is an awesome place for a game. You got to be good with the basketball. The key to BYU's success tonight, in my opinion, is going to be the, the turnover game. If you limit your turnovers and points against turnovers, San Diego State, you know, we know they're long and athletic, and, and their calling card is their defense, but their ability to get deflections, to take your vision away, you know, this is the game within the game. And so you have to be really tight with your passing and ball handling. You can't be casual with the ball. Uh, it's going to be the offensive BYU against the defensive San Diego State.
BYU had 14 turnovers on Tuesday. Got to got to trim that number down. Paul, we appreciate the time, man. Good stuff with Colin Chandler, of course, and some insight into the Horizon Link, and of course, Eric Shork. All right, guys, let's do it again. Okay, thank you, Paul. Thanks, we Paul. appreciate it. Paul Biancardi from ESPN, National Recruiting Analyst. Um, he does great stuff. He was with Colin Chandler on the Instagram Live. Mm -hmm. And uh, great insight into sort of that process and college hoops. And I didn't know he worked with Shark, which is cool. Yeah. He was a strength and conditioning guy. And he's a Horizon League uh, former coach of the year. So he knows Cleveland State. This is like the perfect interview we could have had today. I'm I, no, I, really great insight into the whole uh, ranking system in, with ESPN. And, I mean, obviously has a ton of experience and really excited about Colin Chandler. I mean, who he is said he's an N He said he's an NBA player. Yeah. Um, it, granted, down the road here. Mm -hmm. uh, I would think that Colin needs at least two years here, right? Um, maybe so. a year if he's incredible. Um, but off a mission, that's tough. It's tough. It's a tough ask. You it went is. through that process, right? Mm -hmm. You only averaged 20-something. So, yeah. It can was be done. It was really tough for you <laughs> off a mission. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Just get in the church gym early. That's right. Come on. Get those legs back. And, and I think he's going to hit the ground running, though. I mean, he's in it. He's a next-level talent. so Very exciting. Okay, coming up, BYU women's volleyball coach Heather Olmstead joins us in studio. And who will be playing the role of Jimmer Fredette tonight? Or maybe Brandon Averitt from last year? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU made such a difference in our lives. I think really helped mold us as to as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> with a free BYU TV app. I like it. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. Fifth ranked BYU women's volleyball, excuse me, soccer, taking on New Mexico tomorrow in the NCAA tournament. It's a Mountain West week. It really is. It, it they is. do stay back in town, New Mexico back in town. It's good to uh, have that game. Now, of course, everyone remembers the whole hair pulling and stuff. Way past that. Okay. Way past Boy. that. We're playing. Yeah, hopefully. I, uh, he is Tyler. I'm Jerem. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Of course, you can follow BYU Sports Nation on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok for the content that you want. Let's whip it. Cook Whip Round is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management, tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. Which BYU Cougar is most likely to have a Jimmer-esque performance tonight against the Aztecs? I feel like you can't talk about San Diego State without Jimmer. It feels like it, right? Uh, we showed some Tyler House earlier. Let's acknowledge that. You know, um, Alex Parcells is the only guy yeah. that could go off. Um, he did. He was the only guy that went 20 plus last year. Um, and two years ago, for Alex Barcelo, it was a different role for him. Um, AB is the only guy, man. Hey, Trevin Nell can get hot. I mean, if this is an up and down game, I think Trevin could could get hot. And I mean that in the Jimmer range, though, 
<laughs> I love Tremon. No but one's like, Tremor. Like 47? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, a- AB is unique, right? On a BYU football bye week, which team has your rooting interest and in why? So I like this Baylor-Oklahoma matchup. Mm. I think BYU played Baylor really tough. And if Baylor takes down Oklahoma, I think that strengthens their their schedule. They move up a couple of spots. That's a great point. If you look at BYU's two losses, how were they right? Boise State's unfortunately not going to do anything that matters, really. That just is what it is. But you're right. If Baylor beats Oklahoma all of a sudden, Oklahoma State's still the best team in that league because they would have beaten Baylor. But I also look at uh, Wake in North Carolina State, kind of who do you want to be in there? Do you want Wake to just climb up or North Carolina State to get out of the way from behind? Um, you know, th- this is the question we always have to ask ourselves. Do we actually root for Utah? Do you, have to, do you root for Utah to have a strength of schedule? The answer from me and Dave McCann and Max Hall is never. <laughs> never root I'm sorry. for Utah. I'm sorry. That's just how it We're going to watch them, though, and, and if it if it helps BYU, then great. But I don't I don't think we can ever cheer. It's It's hard. If it helps BYU, we're never that's going to the... say we're cheering for them. Never. Never. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Nine of the 14 2023 expected Big 12 teams are bowl eligible at this point. Is the new Big 12 the third best Power 5 conference in football? The ACC has ridden the coattails of Clemson for a while. Now that Clemson isn't that good, we kind of look at the ACC, and the middle part of it has been better, but ultimately you're kind of defined by the top of the crust. The big, the new Big 12 is going to be really good. I just wonder if there's going to be a national championship contender. That will be the conversation because yeah. it's not enough to have uh, eight to ten win teams. You got to have that team that has zero or one losses that's actually competing at that level. Oklahoma's leaving. Texas is not a contender in the Big 12. Haven't been for several years. Ask the knee brace of Taysom Hill about that. So um, probably the third the talent's there. Someone could rise up. Though. SEC Big Ten behind it. Yeah, yeah, it could happen. Yeah. McWorld, it could happen. Which BYU sporting event is the biggest this weekend? Uh, there's a lot going on, but I, I'm gonna have to say I'm gonna stick with the basketball game. I, I do San Diego think, State. I do think men's hoops versus uh, San Diego State is probably my pick. Uh, second pick would be NCAA tournament game with women's soccer, and of course senior day women's volleyball. That's gonna be an emotional good day uh, and sad day at the same time. But BYU's gonna play some home games in the NCAA tournament, we think, and then women's hoops second game. So a lot going on, baby. Okay, Jerem, we noticed that a Twitter account by the name of Ghost of the Bib followed BYU okay. Sports Nation on Twitter. in the 90s. Yep. Description reading BYU Sports Fandom account. Spencer <laughs> Linton is probably wrong. Jerem Jordan is probably right. What? What is this? Which begs the question, Jerem. Is this, is this a burner account? No, I yours? have a few other uh, of those, but no, this is this is not me. So, like, wow, big fan. I'm going to start following uh, at Ghost of the Bib. I don't think Spencer's wrong. I just disagree with some things. You know, it's different. Jeremy's probably right. I feel like this is the expected <laughs> answer of a, a burner account oh, owner. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe I'll accidentally, you know, like some things. I think things this was Kevin it, Durant's uh, Kevin Durant's response. What, when, one time there was a, an account that talked about BYU broadcasting stuff, like in 2010 or 11, and I was the only follower. And so, like, the brass came down and said, is this you? And I said, no, it's not. <laughs> Uh, Our boy Jason Shepard is hanging out with Mickey Mouse and the Avengers at Disneyland. And, of course, he's uh, head-to-toe BYU gear. Are you the rep the Y guy at <laughs> Disneyland? Hey, or girl? I, I love this. Hey, there's always, I mean, walking around Disneyland, there's always guys repping the Y. I respect that. Got to give him some respect. Come on. But I'm not that guy. You're not the yeah, rep we're, the Y at Disneyland? Yeah, at Disneyland, Disneyland. We're, we, we've got matching T-shirts. I yeah. mean, I leave it up to my wife to, to hang I'm handle prob- the outfits. I, yeah, yeah, good call there. I am probably the rep the Y guy in Disneyland. I think so. Yeah, not, I, not to the, I'm not double logo guy though. We do talk about that. Are you <laughs> double double, logo. Or, double BYU logo though? Okay, coming up, I get to join in the double down fun with my San Diego State picks. Let's see how you do, man. And women's volleyball coach Heather Olmstead is in studio to discuss her six seniors playing their final home regular season match tomorrow. This is BYU Sports Nation. On the basic level, we offer transportation. We carry four wheels, tailgates, and a place to rest your rump. Beyond that, we provide adventures, opportunities, and jobs well done. So perhaps our favorite offering is our full line of trucks, including the new Nissan Titan, 
Right off I-15, Tim Daly Nissan Southtown in the popular full-size Nissan Titan. Think Nissan. Think Tim Daly. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Race. Look at that. I need that number. Team Blue and Green go head to head. Nobody knows where this place is. While Team Black has a golden ticket to meet one last relative. Come in. All the teams have learned their mothers have passed away. I'm so sorry. But with one final day to meet relatives, their hopes are high that they'll meet their fathers. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Number five, BYU women's volleyball hosts LMU tomorrow, 3 Eastern on BYU TV in the app. It is senior day for six seniors. Big game for the Cougars against the Lions. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation in Studio B. I'm Jerem Jordan. He's the all-time leading scorer in BYU history. And the winningest coach by percentage in women's volleyball is in the house today. She is. Heather Olmstead. Heather, what's up? How's it going? Good morning. It's it, good. Does that ever? I, I, you're very like in the moment. You want to win it. You're, you're, you're the winningest coach it's a big in, deal. in the game it's right a big now. Deal. How good was our team last night? Way to deflect. Good job. <laughs> so, <laughs> Immediate so good. Deflection. Okay. I, in so the, good. In the so you sweep Pepperdine. Pepperdine's one out in the top twenty-five. I mean, they are really they are really good. They hit point zero zero eight. How did you shut them down in that way? Yeah, I thought our coaching staff did a great job with the scouting report. I mean, you know that the National Player of the Week's coming into your house. You get pretty fired up uh, to play her and play their team. And so I thought our team executed the scout really well. And it was a team win. Everybody was involved. People stepped up. We had to have people step up in different roles. And that's the sign of a great team. People stepped up when they were needed and played together for each other. And it was pretty cool. They score, what, seven or eight points in the third? I was flabbergasted by how ordinary... BYU made Pepperdine look, but that's part of what you want to do is just keep that pedal going down to the third. Trying to get better every day, and this, this group has embraced that completely, and it it's, starts with the leadership of our team with our seniors. Which there are six, um, and let's talk about them as you host LMU on Senior Day. So we're going to run through the six and uh, have you comment on each. Uh, let's start with the Santa Clara transfer who started at Libero yesterday, Gretchen Reiner. Yeah, How good was Gretchen last night? So fun. Incredible. She played great. Uh, Gretchen brings the energy every day she comes into the gym and works hard she's a grinder she loves she loves the grind of i'm going to show up to work every day bring the energy she exhausts me sometimes so grateful <laughs> she's a byu cougar and she's so consistent and solid the team knows that she's going to show up every day and what kind of attitude she's going to have and that's just something the re reliable player like gretchen i mean it's it's incredible i'm so happy that i've got to coach her for these past couple months her dad, Jeff, played at Gonzaga with John Stockton, fun fact, and was an assistant at BYU, so there's a little tie there, transferred in, which is pretty cool. Okay, Kenzie Kerber, right side hitter, uh, Utah transfer. Talk about her. Yeah, Kenzie, what a great career Kenzie has had. And for her to have that incredible career with all those accolades and want to come to BYU and help our team and add value to our team in, in such different ways with her intensity, her fire, her leadership – I'm so proud of what she's done and how she's contributed to this team and the selflessness that she has to just join what we're doing. Hey, I want to be a part of it. I'll do whatever you need. And what's unique about Kenzie, my relationship with her is uh, it's it's special because, number one, the first time she played for me, she didn't have a choice. She had to play for me. 2019 in Japan. USA Collegiate Team in Japan. <laughs> she didn't have a choice. The second time she chose to come to BYU and play for me and our coaching staff, that's pretty special. It means a lot. When she became available as a transfer... Did you have to double-take that there was a possibility that she could come here? Because 
she uh, you, you've added a lot of great pieces and returning pieces but she, she it feels like she kind of put this team into a different sphere yeah i think we're just blessed to have someone of her her intensity her leadership her level of play want to join our team because um we've got a lot of good players on our team and she was willing to do whatever the team needed so uh, double take, sure. Just grateful that she was interested and w with her unique uh, story of, of being a convert and wanting to be around, you know, BYU and get a different feel. I mean, it I think it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah, it's been very fun. Uh, okay, Whitney Larinus. Yeah, Whitney is um, showed up every day working hard, and she has continued to get better on the court, off the court. I'm so proud of her growth and development. She supports her teammates in any way she can, and the moments that she's been able to help this team have been incredible to see her growth. Um, I thought she was going to get that ace winner last night, and I, she came off the court. I said, you're going for that ace, weren't you? And she was like, I was fearless, Heather. <laughs> so I loved, I love what she means to our team, um, and she's just an incredible person. Um, super blessed to have Coach Whitney. And, and probably um, understated as a teammate, like you said, because it's not easy to be behind two All-Americans and still be engaged, right? Every day. Every yeah. day you know how she's going to show up. She's so consistent. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen Whitney have a bad day at practice. Mm. Like oh. attitude or execution? Uh, yeah, everything. everything. She's, she is solid. That's great. That's awesome. Okay, Taylor Hefo, uh, product of American Fork High School, et cetera. Uh, talk about her. Yeah, we missed Taylor last night. Um, Taylor's been a huge piece of our success this year in the past four years. I don't know if there's a better player on our team that's fulfilling their role than Taylor Hefo. As a server? As a serving sub, as a a sup her relationship with Whitney Bauer these past three years and the support that she's given, it doesn't happen. Mm. It doesn't As happen. As the backup who wants she, to start, certainly. She right? is all in for the team. She mm. definitely wants to play. She works hard every day. She prepares like she's going to play. And she supports Whitney. It's pretty special to see their relationship. Um, so, again, what Taylor's done fulfilling her role for this team and embracing it, I mean, there's so much joy when she's out there for her. her she loves her teammates. She supports her teammates. We missed her last night. Yeah, and her uh, her dad's a lot of fun too. He's right behind us, and I can hear him yelling and screaming, <laughs> getting excited. He he's always great. Talon Ballard Nixon, who has become the last two years this this at times best player on the court, right? She's amazing. Yeah, and as we get you know to Talon and Kennedy, it's it's um, tough. If you want to see somebody who's an epitome of BYU volleyball and the growth, it's Talon Ballard Nixon to come in your first year have an injury. And then your second year, the team goes to the final four and you don't really play. And then you're a role player your junior year. And then you finally get the role that you want. The growth she's made on the court and off the court. Um, and to have two, two years, super senior, to be blessed to have that COVID year, to continue to develop. If you want to see what BYU volleyball players look like when they come in and when they finish, look no further than Taylor Ballard Nixon. What she's doing is pretty special. Yeah, I'm very proud of her. She's so fun to watch. Just last night, just thumping a bunch of kills. She really so much turned power in the third set. Because I said, hey, nice match. She goes, well, in the third set, yeah. She's just trying so hard. <laughs> and right? she keeps it real. You know, that's one of the special things mm. about Taylor. She knows she keeps it real. She's worked hard to develop who she is as a person on and off the court. So, yeah, that's Taylor. She'll tell you like it is. That's awesome. Okay, last but not least, Kennedy Eschenberg, middle blocker. Yeah, Kennedy's pretty special. Um, this is how special Kennedy is. Our biggest competitor in getting Kennedy to commit to our team was our women's basketball team, right? Oh. So we go up against our women's basketball team, and um, she tells me and our staff, I think I'm better in basketball than I am in volleyball. So I want to play volleyball because I want to see how good I can get. What? And that's wow. how special that's Kennedy wild. is. And, and um, it's safe to say that we have seen Kennedy get really good at volleyball. And to have that desire to want to be the best in something that she wasn't super efficient in. She wasn't the best volleyball player. But what we saw in her and her ability, her knack for blocking, uh, her length, um, who she is as a person, which starts from the top down with her parents. And uh, she's the sweetest, hardest working individual. And um, then she met the sweetest guy. And it's just, Zach it's a cool story. Best. And um, yeah, I... Um, to have six years with Kennedy, like, my heart hurts thinking that Kennedy's leaving. It's mm. hard. She joined in year two for you. And here we are in year seven. That's, that's why she's been on this journey with you. Yeah, Kennedy's pretty, pretty cool. special. She's the leader of our team. She's our everything. Um, I can go to her for anything. I can talk to her about anything. And um, she's 
she's a pretty special player, and we're going to miss her, but we're going to celebrate her tomorrow. Yes, and the good news is, you know, we've got tomorrow, uh, 3 Eastern on BYU TV, and then we've got, you know, three more regular season games. What we hope is two games in the uh, NCAA tournament at home, and then probably on the road if you keep going, right? Um, okay, LMU tomorrow. Let's talk about a, a less emotional thing here. Um, LMU is a team that was 14-2 and two at one point, has had some injuries, and are trying to climb out of that, but still a threat that you've got to show up for on, on senior day because you're emotional now. I wonder if you'll be emotional tomorrow because you're, you're intense in the games, right? But it's before. Get a grip, Heather. <laughs> it's, it's all good. It's all good. Feeling things is good. Um, but it's senior day, right? And it's before the match, and you have this match to yeah. play. So how do you navigate those? Yeah, I hope everyone shows up. Um, Cougar Nation and tomorrow at 1, a little early, so yep. to 12.50, so we can celebrate these seniors. And... Yeah, the emotions are there um, for how much this senior group has meant to us. It's unique. Again, you got a sixth year, you got a fifth year, you got two four years, and you got two six month, eight month players. So it's unique. Um, never happened, you know. And so um, we'll we'll be ready for LMU. They're dangerous. Um, they serve well. They they know what they like to do and they do it well. And every match at this point is the most important match of the year because it's the next match on our schedule that helps us get one more step closer to the championship that we want to win in the West Coast and to playing our very best in the tournament and going as far as we can. So it's going to be, uh, you know, the emotions, we'll chat about it, we'll, we'll honor, and we'll also talk even today uh, to prepare ourselves, mostly prepare me, that, you know, <laughs> we, we can fill our feels. Um, but it, it's, it's you, don't, you never want to take for granted playing in the Smithfield House. And that's one of the things, you know, I hope these girls have learned is you just never know when that's going to be over. And so if this is it tomorrow, let's let's go out in a burning blaze of, blaze of glory. I yes, don't know. I love it. Because you never know. And then if you get to play at home again, blessings for sure. But sure. we're gonna we're gonna live it up tomorrow. And I think we're gonna we're gonna bring it and we're gonna play for those seniors. If you don't play at home again, I'll be very upset. But yeah, well, uh, as would you. But yes, Heather, we appreciate the time. I know it's uh, gonna be an emotional, fun uh, day tomorrow. Thank you guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks, okay. Heather. Heather Olmstead in studio. Coming up, rise and shout. Shout out to something bigger than hoops. And the double down is back. Tyler's going to participate. Can he take down Spencer and I? We'll find out. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group. Serving Utah since 1968. Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. down to watch TV. It's a fun way to unite your family, be entertained, and to watch what's on BYU TV. Brings our family together. We all love BYU TV. If you are watching it with the family, you, you will have a good time and you can reconnect and you can bond with your family and have a better relationship with them. All of us together. Getting ready for the ultimate puppy championship. Hey, maybe I could enter Marley. You need two other dogs to make a team. We're gonna be a team? Always know your enemy. What enemy? I was thinking if I could train Marley for this competition, then Mom would let me get my own dog. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. If you like watching buckets, you can go just watch Tyler shoot around or Shaylee Gonzalez and the BYU women's basketball team hosting Fres Yes State tomorrow, 6 Eastern, on the BYU TV app. Part of a triple header tomorrow with BYU TV Sports. Cannot wait. 
We're always available on demand via the free BYU TV and BYU radio apps as well. Or download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. Okay, it's a ball night. Time for our BYUSN double down predictions for tonight's San Diego State and BYU men's basketball game presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group serving Utah since 1960. Here's how it works. We make two predictions about the game. If we get uh, each one is worth one point, we get both, then we get a bonus point for a total of three potentially. After one game, we are tied at one apiece. Spencer's picks, number one. BYU will make eight or more threes tonight. BYU made seven. The other night. Number two, BYU have 13 or four fewer turnovers against San Diego State. Cougars have 14 against Cleveland State. Tyler, what are your picks? Okay, my picks. Caleb Lohner gets that, gets that lid off the rim, makes five threes Whoa, tonight. Five? Five. Holy shnikes. This isn't bold predictions. This is double down. Number one. Come on, that, that's double down. Spencer's were a little soft. <laughs> Come on, Spence. Fre- my second one, I'm predicting a freshman throwdown inside with Richard Harward out. Foose and Atiki dominate the paint tonight against long athletic bigs. They will combine for 20 points and 15 rebounds. Brian Logan, is that you? <laughs> what? Those were very bold. Like... Like size 72 font, bro. Come on, let's go. Okay, my softer picks look like this. Number one, Tijon Lucas was scoring double figures. He didn't the other night. He's going to get into double figs. Not crazy bold. I'm no Tyler Oz, Brian Logan here. <laughs> Number two, a BYU player will make at least three threes. I say this because nobody made more than two on Tuesday, and nobody made more than two against San Diego State last year. So someone's going to go three plus. Man, I look five. It'll be I Caleb. Look, I look soft compared to Tyler. Jeez. Five. Our question of the day. Does BYU need to beat San Diego State if they want to be a single-digit NCAA tournament seed? Our elite voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Ben Peterson on Twitter. No. They can just beat Gonzaga in the West Coast Conference Championship game. That should get them a single-digit seed. I mean, it's just one game. How hard could it be? Uh, It's pretty hard. Very, very hard. Yeah, there was a three-year stretch there where BYU did it in the kennel. And then, of course, you know, 2020 was magical. Lot that was, that was a right. top 15 team for BYU, though, by the way. Uh, yeah, a lot has to go right. Today's Rise and Shoutouts are presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Anyone you want to throw a Rise and Shoutout to? Yes, Gideon George. Uh, I think this shoe drive that he's doing, um, you know, we're giving free socks to, to the first thousand people that bring shoes. But what, how, how he's giving back to his home hometown and country, I think, is, is just really special. It goes way beyond basketball. Absolutely. Cannot wait to see the response that comes tonight. And then the women's volleyball seniors. And best of luck to women's soccer in the NCAA tournament tomorrow. We expect them to get it. Our thanks to today's guests, Paul Biancardi and Heather Olmsted. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. We ran out of time. I know you guys wanted to no banter time, back and forth. We did. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Tyler, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Ronnie Jones-Perry, Copper Hills. What's up? See you tonight for BYU and San Diego State. Go Cougs!